and welcome to another Yards After Cats podcast. This is Jasky, and uh, today I will be previewing the 2010 version of the Jacksonville Jaguars. 7-9 team in 2009, surprisingly uh, competitive in a bunch of games. Uh, this is a team that's coming into the season with having added a good amount of good young talents, uh, sleeper guys out of the draft, mid-round guys, late-round guys, all contributing and, and having prominent roles on both sides of the football. And first I'll look at the offense. The running game, still one of the best in the league, led by Maurice Jones-Drew. He got his first opportunity to be the, the only guy, the one guy, the headline guy in the backfield after Fred Turner left. And, and he showed himself plenty capable of handling that role. He is a complete running back. He is a workhorse. He can take a, a large load even at his diminutive uh, size. Uh, an explosive guy can score from anywhere on the field, uh, but also a guy that can run with power in between the tackles and catch balls outside of the backfield. Uh, but he has a deep stable of. Uh, they've added. A, a, they've, they've managed to make this backfield pretty deep between Rashad Jennings, uh, a late round guy last year I thought was a complete steal, and I think they got another steal this year in Deji Karam, uh, out of Southern Illinois. And uh, Deji Karam is is in the mold of Maurice Jones. Drew, small, compact, but fast quick, elusive, powerful. Um, Rashad Jennings, I think, is big, fast, and has good hands, and I think he you know, he could compete for starting jobs across the league uh, in other places uh, d- down the line, but good, good, I think they have a, 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 a balanced and stable backfield, and I think their offensive line uh, did a fair job run blocking, especially even, even though they had two rookies starting at the tackle spots, and Brad Meester had a horrible year at center. Uh, Eugene Monroe, Evan Britton did a solid job uh, in the run game, particularly Eugene Monroe. And the guard spots, uh, Vince Manuai was fine. Uh, he was recovering from his ACL injury in 08, from, from 08. And, uh, and I think at the other guard spot, we're going to see, we might see Uchi and Nwaneri. Uh This is the right guard spot. Um, we might see Keenan Forney. They also signed Justin Smiley in the offseason. So I think they'll get some good competition to try and improve that interior group and maybe Uchi and Ranieri might uh, move to it might be the long term option at center so we'll, we'll see how that competition and the interior uh, improves but uh, in a passing game I think this this was a passing game that was largely hobbled by inexperience at the receiver position and poor pass protection I think Eugene Monroe and Evan Burton had 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 you know, I mean, they were rookies, so I don't know what you expect, but they did not have very good years at all. David Garrard took 42 sacks, and, uh, and, and the, the passing game was largely inconsistent as a result. But one good thing that we saw was the emergence of Mike Sims Walker at the receiver position. He's a big guy. I, I think he's more like a poor man's Andre Johnson with his size, um, his ball skills, uh, his smoothness. I think the, 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 the one word I could call him is smooth, and he's good after the catch as well. Um, and and uh, we'll see if he can manage to be more consistent throughout the season. But I think he's a legitimate number one guy, and it was great to see him emerge. But uh, aside from him, got a bunch of young guys. Mike Thomas, Jarrett Dillard, I think the headline guys, those are the guys that are going to have to step up and, and potentially take the number two and number three roles uh, as Troy Williamson has kind of faded out over time. Taekwon Underwood is still, you know, it was a late-round pick last year, but he's still, you know, he's still trying to gain more consistency. But I think Mike Thomas and Jarrett Dillard, Fast, quick guys, sure hands. Um, we'll see which one takes that slot position, which one potentially takes an outside position. But I think those guys are dynamic and good, uh, good complements to the size and uh, playmaking of Mike Sims Walker uh, on the other side. Tight end spot, I think they've done a good job. Of, of uh, uh, last year, they drafted Zach Miller as a you know as a more a speedier complement to Mercedes Lewis, but I think Mercedes Lewis is a legitimate number one tight end. Great blocker, very underrated blocker, but also a very good receiver as well. And uh, he's improved the consistency of his hands, and I think he's a legitimate option in the passing offense. But I think really the passing offense, the upside of this offense will depend on David Garrard. He's got to be able to get the ball out of his hands, make the right reads, uh, uh, not force balls, but also take, take shots down the field. I think he has a, he has a solid arm, not, not an all, awesome arm, but a solid arm, and I think he has the playmakers in the passing game to stretch the field a little bit. Uh, so there's got to find that balance between conservative uh, play and and you know not turning the ball over, not risking uh, turnovers. But overall, this offense does have some some good young talent, and we'll see. As uh, I think the offensive line will carry a lot of 
the, the pressure on of, of improvement. On defense, this is a defense that you know, it was poor. A lot of young players, but a lot of disappointing uh, pl play out of, of, of a few guys. On the defensive line, uh, John Henderson is no longer here. I thought he had a solid year, but probably time for him to move on. I think Terrence Knighton can really take on that nose tackle spot. He's a big guy. He's, you know, he's got to work on his conditioning a little bit right now, but I think he can really take that role. Second year player, another steal, uh, mid round type steal, small school guy, Temple. Uh, last year, and uh, uh, but along the rest of the defensive line, there's a lot of question marks. At the defensive ends, Derek Harvey has been subpar thus far. Thus, thus far is, is almost a bust, uh, but purportedly he's lost some weight, gotten back down to his college weight, and we'll see if he can regain some of that explosiveness and, and, and suddenness as a pass rusher. Because uh, they, they really want, uh, and, and, and they signed Aaron Kentman as well uh, to, to contribute to the pass rush. Aaron Kampman, I think, still has juice in the tank. He's recovering from a knee injury, but I think he'll be able to contribute and be productive. So between Harvey and Kampman, those guys, I think, can be productive. They're both long. They're both athletic. And, uh, and they will be counted on to improve an anemic pass rush uh, from last year. Austin Lane, Larry Hart, a couple pass rushers they drafted in the draft as well. Austin Lane is a project completely. And Larry Hart is a very undersized guy. He might be a situational guy. And I, but I think he has some quickness and some upside as a, as a, as a good pass rusher. On the, on the inside, next to Terrence Knighton, I think you might you'll probably see a rookie start there, Tyson Alawalu. Uh, most people thought it was a reach. I think Alawalu is a, a very good talent as a three technique defensive tackle. He, has, he can penetrate, he can disrupt, and I think that's what they want. They want a guy that can potentially uh, cause an interior pass rush. They also drafted DeAnthony Smith as another guy in the mold of Tyson Alawalu. Um, not, not a huge guy. But a guy that plays a good pad level, good strength up front, but also has a quickness and a burst. This is a guy that plays some defensive end in college at Louisiana Tech. And this is a guy that can provide a pass rush uh, if he plays uh, with the toughness and, and, uh, and, and energy that he can play with. The linebacker spot is, is a team that saw a little bit of a makeover, let Clint Ingram go, uh, and, and traded for Kirk Morrison from Oakland. Morrison will step in at middle linebacker. And they'll uh, and they'll have Daryl Smith and Justin Durant at the outside linebacker positions. I think Daryl Smith's a good player outside linebacker, very underrated, but he's a guy that's solid in pass coverage and run defense, a big guy as well. Justin Durant has the speed and range to be a playmaker at the linebacker spot. We'll see uh, if he if he can you know, be be successful again at the outside linebacker spot after a stint on the inside. And Kirk Morrison is a middle linebacker. He's not a world beater. He's not an awesome player. But he's a guy that can make tackles, be solid in run support, and uh, and and has the athleticism and playmaking skills to be decent in pass coverage as well. I think it's an upgrade overall. I think the linebacking core will see an upgrade. In the secondary, uh, at corner, uh, Rasheem Mathis is certainly not the player he once was, uh, but he's, he's he might still have some left in the tank going into his eighth year. He will need to upgrade his play. Derek Cox did not have a great year as a rookie, but I think he has. There is something there with his length. And, and his strength, especially in the run support, I think he can be solid. Uh, he will need to develop and take the next step as a second-year player. In the, in, the, in the nickel spot, I like Tyron Brackenridge. I think he's, he can make some plays. I think he has some athleticism. I think he had a solid year last year as well. And they're trying to develop depth there at nickel. You see guys like young guys like Don Carey. Uh, but, uh, but that is definitely a question mark. And at the safety spot, Reggie Nelson had a poor year last year, uh, especially in pass coverage, something that wasn't expected given his – his, his 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 status coming out of college, but he'll need to improve his play unless Anthony Smith will get some more snaps there. And Sean Considine and Gerald Alexander should compete for the strong safety spot. Gerald Alexander probably has a step above him, uh, but but certainly the safety position for the Jaguars is not a strength and, and, and definitely will need to be addressed in the offseason. But overall, this defense has some young players, guys like Derek Cox, guys like Derek Harvey, uh, guys, guys that can step up, guys like Tyson Alawalu need to also uh, step in and, and be productive. But if this group is productive overall and plays to their skills, I think this defense can can become one of the one of the middle of the pack to above the average defenses in the league uh, as soon as this year. But a lot of question marks. Definitely some poor uh, some poor positions on both sides of the, uh, both sides of the field. But a lot of young talent, and this team has done a good job assembling that. Overall, I think this Jaguars team is a team that. Probably won't compete for a playoff spot, but certainly in the next year or two, can definitely do that.